What's up YouTube and Unreal Developers? In this video I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the Charts Pro Starter Collection. Uh, so we've got uh, three three-dimensional charts and four 2D charts. So the only chart that doesn't have a uh, 3D equivalent is this scatter plot here. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and start out with this one. Although it doesn't have a 3D equivalent, this is probably one of my mo most robust 2D charts. It's very versatile. Uh, so just leaving these at the default, let's go ahead and add a point. See, it's going to drop it in here at zero, 00, redraw the line. Uh, you can set some offsets for chart here. So this is just a percentage of the total range that it detects. So that kind of just lets you set like a almost like a zoom for the chart. Uh, you can quickly and easily change the chart size right here. And it will scale everything up accordingly. Uh, you can disable or re-enable animations here. And there's a lot of different configurations for this chart. As you can see, you can use any combination of these. So this can be a scatter plot, it can be a line chart. Um, you can make it however clean or informative you want. Um, whatever information you want to display, that's, that's up to you. Uh, so again, we can change our animation speed here. We can change our decimal precision. Uh, we could use a whole bunch of axis markers or none at all. And you can also set these labels here. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the scatter plot. Pretty versatile, lots you can do here. This is not necessarily all of the properties that are available on the chart, it's just the kind of major ones, I guess. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So moving on to the pie chart. Uh, and as you can see in my sample uh, levels here, I've added the option to switch between the different chart types uh, with one through four. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and add a section to the pie chart here. This will be section D. And you can add some extra text here if you like. So you can format some extra text in here however you want. And of course, you'd also format the um, kind of the base text if you like. Um, so you do have the option to just let these colors be randomized. It does a pretty good job of finding a pretty variable color at a small section count. So if you have like four or five sections, it's probably going to do okay. If you have like ten sections, you probably should. I would recommend setting colors because it may not do a phenomenal job of. Uh, getting a variable color in there but as you can see here if we do set the color uh, manually it will not randomize um, actually this uh, yeah so if it if you leave the colors at default it will it will always uh, randomize them I believe um, anyway so we have a lot that we can change in here we can increase the thickness of our border turn it off completely um, this only applies to the 2D chart naturally, but let's say you didn't want to show that smallest sections percentage in there. Uh, so yeah, this will get rid of the 15 and the 20. Uh, but of course this only applies to the 2D chart as I said. Uh, let's see, you can change your animation speed here. And these stay really well synchronized. I did find through some testing if you want to make this basically like a 60 second clock, that's the kind of magic number to get at least pretty close. Um, so yeah, you can also set a delay between sections animating here. Let's crank this back up. And you can set all your decimal values and stuff here. Aside from that, you can also uh, move this key around for the 2D chart. So that's kind of handy if you want this to be positioned a little bit differently or change the scale of it. Uh, you have the options to do that. Again, I guess I better set this back something. So as you can see, you can change the color of the perimeter border here, and also this uh, intersection color. So that applies to both chart types. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the the pie chart. Um, whoops, not what I meant to do. Uh, so let's move on to the heat map here. So. Uh, for the heat map, uh, this is really good for seeing kind of relative quality of text. Uh, so we can click on these and get some more information about them. Again, you can format this text however you like. So these are just some optional tooltips. You can also disable this functionality altogether if you wish to. Um, so yeah, let's see here. Let's go ahead and add a row. So this would be, whoops, row E, and we're going to say this is going to have a value of six. I don't really remember what the actual range of this is. Okay, negative 0 0.28, 1.29. So this is going to be 
let's make this one. And we'll add that value. And we'll add another value. And as you can see, since I only added two values, these are both just defaulting to zero. Because I only added two values, and it's just going to map them sequentially through the columns. So be aware of that. Uh, if you don't have uh, all of the values for a section, you might want to inject something in there. So again, uh, we can set some various properties here. Hello, table. Uh, you can set the uh, margins for these bubbles here. Uh, this is the minimum opacity, so you can see here at the zero, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it actually still has a little bit of an opacity. Um, so I could turn that off if I wanted to, and I could also limit it to a lower opacity at the max if I wanted to. And, of course, you again have the animation speeds to change here, or whether or not to use those at all. And, just to kind of show how this looks, so that's, that's the animations there, and you can test out the various different values uh, with this button. Alright, last but not least, we have the bar chart. Uh, so again, uh, these animations should synchronize pretty well. Uh, let's see, we're going to add a value of, let's just make this 2.1, we'll say. Maybe section E. I believe the default margins are actually 16. So, let's add a bar. Boom. Easy peasy. Uh, again, you have your animation speeds that you can set here. Uh, I think, oh yeah, there you go. I can put this button here. As you can see, I kind of had, this was my first chart, so I was kind of figuring out how I wanted to set up these test input UIs. Uh, yeah, as you can see, we can test the different speeds with this update button. And uh, so if we check this use tooltips here, again we do have this tooltip here that shows the section name and title, and you can format this tooltip however you like for your data. Uh, so then we have whether or not to auto scale, so if we were to turn this off, it's only going to go from 0 to 1 currently, so we'll see what happens if I do that. So yeah, as you can see, negative 5, like below. And everything that's over one is now going all the way to the max because I've set a custom scale instead of auto scaling it. Uh, again, you can set your precision. And if you are auto scaling, you have the option to use these. So this will add a little bit of an offset so that it doesn't go all the way to the bottom or all, all the way to the top or just however you want to use those. And again, we can change the number of axis markers. And boom. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Uh, once again, uh, if you do have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you'll like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or this tool. Thanks, and have a great day.